Hello everybody, I'm Nick and this is I'm going to show you how you can get started with Redis Cache in your .NET application. This is valid for .NET Core, Framework and Standard. Redis is an open source distributed in-memory data structure store used as a database, cache and message broker. In this video we're going to cover all three. It supports many complex data structures but I'm only going to focus on strings because that's probably the most common one. In the future I'm going to make a more advanced video covering more complex data structures. Redis has built-in replication, which we're going to show in this video, and it allows us to have a very performant distributed cache for our application and our system. It's usually used on top of a database in order to cache data from that database, making it more efficient because we don't actually go to the database and stress that, we just cache it for some amount of time in Redis, and then we use Redis as a quick way to access that data. This video is part of my .NET Core series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, please subscribe and ring the sub notification bell to get notified when I upload a new episode. So as you can see here, I have a simple API with a couple of endpoints. Currently this API has a single controller called Cache Controller, and this controller is used in order to allow me access to a cache. Now, this cache is exposed through the iCache service interface, and this interface is being implemented by the in-memory cache service. This service is using an in-memory cache, as you can see here, that's a .NET class. And then I can do get and the type, and I'm getting the string based on the key I'm providing. So it's a key value pair store. And then I can also set the value. So I can say key and value, and I'm setting it here and I'm returning success. And if I really quickly run this, I'm gonna show you how it looks like in Postman. So I have my endpoint here and I say cache and then test is the key of the cache entry I wanna search for. And I say send and you can see that it 404 is not found because the key doesn't actually exist in the cache. But then I can go here in the post endpoint and say key test and value my cache value here. And I press send and it says okay, which is good. And then I can simply do the test get endpoint again and you now see the value because the value now is in the cache. So a very basic in-memory cache exposed through a controller. What I wanna do here is I wanna change that in-memory cache into a Redis distributed cache. And how do I do that? Well, there's a very helpful package that allows us to access Redis. And that is made by the Stack Overflow guys under the Stack Exchange umbrella. I can show you exactly where it is right now. So you go to dependencies, manage NuGet packages, and you say stack exchange redis and it's the first one you're gonna see it's a very popular package and i'm gonna go ahead and install it so it is now part of my project and there is a very important interface and class which we need and this class and interface is the i connection multiplexer now i won't go really in depth on what the connection multiplexer does behind the scenes but imagine it as your entry point to redis this is what you should be using and this I connection multiplexer should be registered as a singleton and maintained throughout the lifetime of your application. You shouldn't be just reinstantiating every time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say services dot add singleton. And what I want to register is the I connection multiplexer that's coming from Redis. And then in the Lambda here, I want to say connection multiplexer, the class dot connect and here I provide the connection string for my connection I'm going to use a configuration to get that so I'm going to say configuration dot get value and then that will be a string and the string would be a redis connection and I'm going to go at the app settings dot json and I'm going to add it here and what this will look like, where I'm gonna run it in Docker localhost. So I can simply say localhost like that, but I'm also gonna specify the port because I don't need to because 6379 is the default, but just for clarity purposes, I'm gonna add that here. And now what I've done is I registered my multiplexer, which is my entry point. And then what I want is to change this add singleton i cast service to in memory cast service to a Redis one. So what I need to do now is I need to go to services and say add a new class. I don't need to delete the previous one or modify it. Dependency injection will deal with that for us, which is a great thing about dependency injection. And then I can say Redis cache service. And this class will now need to implement the uh, iCache 
service interface and as you can see it asks us to uh, implement the missing members so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and as you can see they're now implemented and what I need to inject here to work with this is the I connection multiplexer that I just registered so read only I connection multiplexer as you can see here and then I will use a rider shortcut to inject it from the constructor and now we have access to Redis now how do I actually write and read stuff from it there's a step that you need to do first before you can actually write or read you need to get the database because Redis has a bunch of databases within it and they can be used for different purposes but you most likely aren't going to use them so for that reason I'm gonna default it to the one that Redis defaults anyway which is the zero which is the first one so we're gonna say var db equals connection multiplexer dot get database and I'm gonna leave it as it is it's gonna default to the minus one actually and then I am able to use this database to get and set values so in Redis it will look like this db dot string get and I can use a sync or async I'm gonna go with the async here and I'm getting a string back and I need the key and the key is the key itself and then I just say return await and I do an async here and literally that's it you now have access to that string of course if you wanted to have a more complicated data structure you could very much get that string serialize it from a JSON string to a POCO object and return that POCO object this is totally doable using the JSON converters but in this example I won't use it and then for the setter I need to do the same thing I need to get the same database here so I'm gonna copy that here and I can say await db dot string set async and I can simply say key and value and that's it I simply have to change it now to async and it all works and keep in mind that Redis works with the set scenario the set approach and set is also equivalent to upset so you don't just insert you insert or you update if it's there so you don't care whether it's there or not you just put the value in there and you replace everything existing and that's it so now we have our Redis cache service here I'm gonna go to the startup and instead of registering the in-memory cache service I'm gonna comment that out just in case we need it in the future and then I'll simply register the Redis cache service and in fact I don't think order matters because that's a lambda in here but let's make it clearer and show that you need the multiplexer here and now obviously I need a Redis running and I don't have that so I'm gonna run this in docker I'm gonna go in console and what I can say here is docker run and then I need to specify the port because I need to run it locally and I'm gonna say 6379 6379 again so that is the external port and the internal port and then I need a name and I'm gonna name it Redis master and I'm gonna explain why that's master in a second and then there's another configuration where I have to say Redis replication mode equals master I don't need to specify that now but I'm gonna show you how you can actually use replication in your Redis cluster if you want and I think that's pretty interesting so I'm gonna set that up now he just adds a few environment variables another one is allow empty password wow that's being cut off that's not really nice let me make this smaller and then I will say yes and then specify the image I want to run which is the bitnami for slash redis latest oh you can't actually see it let's see oh yeah you can see it now so redis was last latest and I can run this now it says unable to find the image locally because I don't have it in my local cache that's probably what you're gonna see as well and now it's gonna try to download it and run it I'm gonna skip this downloading bit in case it's slow and we're gonna see what happens once it's downloaded so the download is now complete and you can see that my redis service is running so I have here a tool called the redis desktop manager and I'm gonna use that to navigate redis there's other tools as well you can choose whatever you want if I test the connection it says it's okay so I'm gonna go ahead and connect of course I need to give it a name so I'm gonna say master and press ok and you can see that there are no keys here in the cluster these are the databases I was talking about so the minus one is the zero 
if I make that smaller, I can now run my application and hopefully, assuming I did everything right, we should be able to connect to that Redis. So back in Postman, I'm going to try to get this value again and nothing comes back. This is good because nothing is in the cache actually. And now if I try to create this value, I can say send and it says OK. And if I now do check, my cache value is here, which is awesome. And if I go to the navigator and I say refresh, you can see that I have a single key with my value of 19 bytes saying my cache value here. So for the basic setup scenario of putting a string and getting a string back, literally that's all the code you have to write. Of course, if you have serialization, you can use the JSON converter to change the string to a POCO object. But other than that, this is all you need. And you can find all the code in the description down below. Now, this is one of the features that Redis has, but you might remember from the introduction that I also messaged that Redis can do messaging. And that is true. Redis has a pub sub scenario where you can subscribe to channels and publish messages into channels. And I'm going to show you as part of this video how you can do that because I think there might be a use case for you there. So I'm going to stop this application and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder called background tasks. And then I'm going to create a new class here, a new uh, long running task, and that will be the Redis subscriber. And that will essentially subscribe to Redis and listen for messages in a specific channel. And how it's going to do that? Well, I'm going to using the background service class, which allows me to create a long running service in .NET Core. And in here, I'm going to use my Redis code. Before I do that, let me quickly configure it in the startup. So I need to say services.add hosted service and the type. And why is that not allowed? Oh yeah, I need to import it. So that is now registered. So let's write the code that we need to write. Of course, I need to use the I connection multiplexer again. So private read only I connection multiplexer. And I need to inject that from the constructor as you would do normally. And then in here, what I can do is I can say, get subscriber. And this subscriber now can start consuming messages. And how can I do that? I can say subscriber dot subscribe. And you can also publish and you have many, many options, but I'm just going to say subscribe async actually, and just return that. And then I have to specify the channel I want to, I want to subscribe to. You can also use patterns. So if you use star, for example, you're going to subscribe to every channel, but in here, let's just say messages. And then you have either some commands or a Lambda, which is what I will use, which is the uh, channel, as you can see here, and the value that was posted into the channel. And in here, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say console dot right line. And then I'm going to say the message content was and the value which was the message content and now with that out of the way I'm gonna go ahead and run this as you can see I haven't done anything in Redis to make this work I simply said subscribe to this channel and start consuming and just to prove you that the Redis cache is still persisted if I do a get I still get my value here so it is properly working how do I publish something well I'm gonna click that button here that allows me to open the console. So as you can see down here, I have the console and I can say publish messages, which is my channel name and then the message I want. So hi, not his, hi from the console. And of course I had to add quotes around that. So let me just do that. And it says one, which means probably one person actually received that. And as you can see here, I actually have the message. Oh, I totally misspelled the message. Anyway, the message content was hi from the console. So I can just keep doing that if I want and publish any sort of messages. This is another one. And you can see how many subscribers you have here. And somebody can just start consuming these messages on the background as if it was a message broker. So I think that's a very useful other feature that Reddit has that people don't appreciate as much as they probably should do or use in general. The last thing I want to show you is the replication bit. 
because this is another thing that the multiplexer can do. In Redis, you can have a cluster of nodes, and that's very good because your data can be replicated across those nodes and have redundancy and resiliency. But as you can see, I only started one Redis instance here. How do I do another one? Well, if I do a clear, as you can see in my Docker PS, my service is running on that port named Redis Master, but I want to add a replica, I want to add a slave. Sorry for the wording, it's what Redis is using. And how do I do that? Well, I won't bore you with copying a whole command, you're going to find that in the description down below anyway, but the command is this. It says Redis run, and I need to specify the external port and the internal port, and then I name it as Redis replica, and I'm linking it to its master, which is the Redis master, which you can see here. And then I specify that this is a slave and the master's host is master and then the Redis master port is the one specified here. I don't have a password and I allow empty passwords. In a realistic scenario, you will have a password and ideally it will be behind some firewall as well. But in this scenario for local usage, I don't have to do this. And I'm just going to run it. And as you can see, the replica or slave is now running and it also says that it did receive some bytes from the master. So let's see what happens. If I just quickly refresh that, you can see we have a test key here. And now we also have the replica. And to connect to it, I'm just going to increase the port and I'm going to call it replica. And I'm going to run it and we can connect. And look at that. The replica has the exact same key with the exact same value as the master. We never put it into that server and that's a completely different Redis instance. But it is now successfully replicated. And let's see what happens if I run this application and actually add a value into the key. So this value still exists, but if I say test2 and say my new value and I run this, I can refresh the database and I have two keys. But if I refresh the replica database as well, I also have two keys. Now, keep in mind, my application didn't do that. Redis did that with the configuration of the slave and the master, the replica and the master. And Currently, I'm only using the master in my .NET application. So how do I tell the multiplexer that there's more than one service that it needs to know about? Well, I go to my app settings again, and I just copy that, and I say, comma, and I put the new IP. The multiplexer will automatically figure out that this is the master and this is a slave, so they don't need to be in any specific order. And now with that here, our application's multiplexer will actually know that it has a master and a slave and will work with both of these databases if needed. And the application doesn't change the behavior at all. I can add the third key, my other value here. What's a father? My other. And I send it and it all works fine. I can simply get the value again. And you can see my other value. And if I go to Redis, my data is replicated and both of these databases are used by my multiplexer, which is awesome. That's all I want to cover for this video. You're going to find all the code in the description down below. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notified when I upload a new episode. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.